Hi guys, my name's Andy Crowley and in this lesson I'm talking you through my five things that really separate beginner guitar players from intermediate guitar players. Now this is a lesson that's very much inspired by a fellow YouTube guitar teacher and a friend of mine, Eric Andreas. Uh, it's a fantastic lesson that he's got on the five things and every intermediate player should know, you should definitely check it out. But as I have one of the biggest beginner guitar lesson channels and I do feel like I'm a beginner specialist in my private lessons and private teaching and online, I felt I should give my opinions, uh, which do differ slightly, of how beginners can get to that improver intermediate level and the things that you should be trying to attain to get there. So the first thing that really separates beginner players from intermediates, the thing that intermediates can really nail, is using the F bar chord in real songs and it's still really sounding like the original song. So in my opinion, most beginners, if with some perseverance and if all they work on is just being able to get the strings ringing out of an F bar chord or any other bar chord for that matter, then you can do it. And you can, a lot of people kind of see that as ticking that box and then they move on to do something else. With everything with music and guitar knowledge, it's not knowing the thing or being able to do the one technique, it's being able to apply that technique to real songs and real musical applications. So the biggest tip that I can give you for that is make sure you learn some songs and as people who follow my channel will know, we've been doing heaps of F bar chord songs now and there's a link in the description that will give you some songs to really master this F bar chord in real musical situations. Not being able to play the F bar chord it tends to be a symptom of an underlying cause and the cause of this is most evident when any guitar player when we see them placing one finger down at a time. This is really evident on the C chord or on the G chord so if you're making a, a G chord like this one two three and when you go to a C chord, again, you have to go one, two, three, then that is an underlying cause of why you're probably having problems using bar chords or any advanced chords or any problems with chord changing at all. That is the, the main thing that we need to stop. When we're changing between, for example, the G to a C or any chord to the F bar chord, what we tend to have to do first is make the shape of the chord and then place it down. That is the real trick with the F bar chord. My three fingers are in place and then my first finger goes down like this. When I go for a G chord, my fingers and hand can make the shape of a G chord without them being down yet and then press down. There's an exercise for this that is in the link in the description and there'll be a link on the screen now about how to change chords smoothly and effectively and it's an exercise designed to cure that basically, to stop you from each finger going down one at a time and to put them all down together and get your fingers to memorize the shapes of these chords rather than placing fingers down one finger at a time. The third thing that intermediate players can do that beginners tend to struggle with is learning songs quickly. Now this has become apparent for the Skype lessons that I offer. I've taught a lot of people over Skype, particularly in America, uh, over the last couple of years or so. And even recently, there have been a lot of people saying that they have completed my beginner's course, which is available on my website, and majority of it is free. They say they've completed it, but when we're giving the lesson and when they're demoing certain things or when they're talking about their playing, it becomes evident that learning new songs or remembering the songs that they claim to have already been able to play is a great challenge for them and something, it's kind of a hurdle that they've not come across yet. Maybe they struggle reading chord sheets or reading tab or anything like this. Now the thing that you need to do if that really speaks to you as a problem, it's a problem you've been facing, is learn more examples, so more song examples using the same technique. So for example, if you're learning the G chord, if that's one that you've just come across, or if you're learning bar chords or something, if you learn just one song that uses that particular technique, that chord, or that, you know, that, that technique that you're learning, you've not seen it in enough context it would totally depend on what that song is. I could give you an F bar chord song that was super easy that anyone could do and then I can also give you a song with an F bar chord in it that would be so advanced probably even I couldn't play it. You know, it's this, this, when it's song dependent and when you're choosing the songs 
from songs that you heard before or songs that just you like, um, you're not giving yourself enough song examples to let your ability catch up with your taste, as it were. So I'd follow certain recommendations or search out songs. Um, on my website's a great example, but you don't have to stick to my website. Of course, YouTube's there and, and other websites are available. You just need to find out what you're trying to master at this point uh, to get you over a certain hurdle and find greater examples, song examples, of that and learn those and that's how you'll get over that particular hurdle. The fourth point that separates intermediate players from beginners is uh, being able to work out or just naturally kind of find the correct strumming pattern for a song. Now this is particularly evident when uh, maybe I'm teaching someone and they can't do a certain strumming pattern that is of a level that they should be able to do. So for example, Wonderwall, if someone's struggling to being able to nail that riff and get it to sound really correct and great, what's often the case is it's not the ability of the person, so like the person's actual strumming ability that's standing in the way of them being able to either nail a strumming pattern or work it out by ear, by listening listening, it's often that they just can't quite hear and distinguish exactly what's happening. They can't quite figure out what they're being expected to do to play it. So this is exactly why I created my strumming course, my beginner strumming course. It's available, as I say, vast majority for free on my website. And here we have uh, something that I call my strumming pattern family tree. Now this is where we have two strands of um, basically strumming patterns that are very similar but are differentiated by their tempo. So slower strumming or slower tempoed songs have certain strumming patterns that work and that uh, a song can go between because songs don't always stay to the same strumming pattern guys okay that, that can happen and then faster strumming songs again it's a different hand motion. To briefly explain it um, Anything, any song which is of a slow tempo, so slower than 100 BPM, we have uh, all down strumming on the eighth count, so one and two and three and four and, and then we have 16th strumming that goes from there where we fill in the ands, one or fill in the upstrokes, one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a. That is a very different count and a very different strumming motion to what we do with faster songs. When we have faster songs, uh, it tends to be a count where the downstrokes are on the beat. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two, which is different to one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a. The difference is how you count. So I guess another way of explaining um, this this point, which is working out strumming patterns by ear, is being able to find the underlying beat in a strumming pattern and therefore helping you connect with it. So that rhythm knowledge, and as I say, if that's something that you want to improve, my strumming course available on my website is the best place to start, in my opinion. Totally unbiased, of course. And the final point, which I believe separates real, true, Im improver and intermediate guitar players from beginners is note finding. Being able to tell within a few seconds or work out within a few seconds what the single note name is at any single fret. So for example, fifth fret on the thickest E string is an A. Fifth fret on the A string is a D. Uh, seventh fret on the uh, fourth string is also an A. And we've worked that out or we can prove that because it's the octave of the first A. Now especially when it gets to strings two and three, most people who are certainly that are new at this note finding business, that, that is more tricky. But as an intermediate or improver player, you have to know the thickest two strings absolutely off by heart. It's a couple of tricks to this. It's really handy to know that on the thickest two strings, the dots on your guitar tend to be on the naturals. So this thickest uh, string, this would be a G, and then the next dot is an A, and the next dot is a B. And in between those are the sharps and flats. So we have G sharp, also known as an A flat. And then we have an A sharp. And then on the string below that, again on the three dots, we have a C note, a third fret of the fifth string. Fifth string again, that's a D, so another natural. 
not a sharp or flat, for example, and then E at the seventh fret. Now, a similar pattern does continue later on, but it's not as precise as that. As I say, the first three dots are naturals, they're not sharps and flats. The double dot is the same as your open string, so that is not sharps and flats either. The only one that is different to that is the ninth fret. And we'll have more on this note finding in my Improver Intermediate course coming later this year. It'll definitely be out before Christmas. We're uh, just finishing off the booklet at the moment to go with that. But there is some note finding in my beginner's course. The link to that lesson, if this is new to you, is in the description below. And all of these items will really help you get from this beginner to an intermediate level, which I see as kind of like... In, in a way, there's, there's a big gulf there. A lot of people, you know, happily consider themselves to be beginners because they've not been learning very long and just for the level that they're at. And then there are these people that just seem to be able to do it. You'll see them online and you'll perhaps see them in guitar shops. There are people who just seem to be able to play songs. They just seem to, you know, you name a song and they can play some of it. And... That can be incredibly frustrating as a beginner seeing that and thinking you're never going to get there. Or it's also a case that, okay, I know that's going to take some work, but how do I get to that level? And in my opinion, this, this gulf of uh, what I would call improver sort of lessons is what I'm filling in now on my channel. So we have beginner lessons already. There's a lot of intermediate lessons on YouTube and a lot of guitar teachers offer that and a lot of the content is for free. But there's this gulf in the middle, which is an improver level. And that is my mission for this year to get people from this beginner's level, from the end of my beginner's course, for example, up to and, and improving and mastering this intermediate level. This is where I am. If that sounds like you guys, please subscribe and I promise we will get you there. And the majority of my lessons are for free on my website and on YouTube, andyguitar.co.uk. And we do have these bonus extras available that are coming on the DVD and download products. Uh, but that is my mission for this year. I hope you sign up and join the journey with me. Please subscribe, check out those other lessons if one of those was of interest to you, and I will see you again. Take care, guys. Bye for now.